Will the latest news out of the college football playoff meetings force Notre Dame to join a conference? Maybe. Welcome in. This is Winning Cures Everything, where we talk college football year-round. I'm Gary. Today, we're going to talk about the potential realignment implications the latest CFP meetings could have on the college football landscape. In the most recent video, we discussed Florida State's legal battle in their effort to get out of the ACC. But today, it feels like we need to talk about the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Now, before we fire in, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and, of course, if you like the show, Tell your friends about it. Uh, if you want to interact with me, I am on X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it, at GaryWCE. Notre Dame football has been independent forever, officially since 1978 when being an independent was actually recognized as a thing. Uh, there was the 2020 season where they joined the ACC for the COVID season, but that was really only enabled because all other Notre Dame athletics are members of the Atlantic Coast Conference, and all the conferences were doing conference-only schedules. Like you, you guys remember how that season went. Uh, NBC has broadcast Irish football games since 1991. The current TV contract with NBC pays the school an average of about $22 million per year, and it's set to expire before the 2025 football season. Uh, and the network and the school announced in November of 2023 an extension of the TV deal through 2029. Uh, reports suggest that Notre Dame stands to make about $50 million per season from that deal, which combined with the $17 million annually from the ACC, uh, that would be around $67 million. That's nearly on par with the Big Ten and SEC teams with their new contracts. So they've got a really good media rights deal with NBC. They're in a winnable Atlantic Coast Conference in the other sports, and the new 12-team playoff is set up to allow them access without having to take part in a conference championship game. Uh, if they get a top eight seed, they're guaranteed a home game. So last year, rather than playing Michigan in the Big Ten title game in Indianapolis, uh, they would have played SMU at home in the first round of the playoff without having to worry about the you know much-talked-about 13th data point. People that don't really keep track of this sport got all kinds of fired up last week thinking that the new 12-team playoff was actually a detriment for Notre Dame. The fact of the matter is, uh, soon-to-be former AD Jack Swarbrick was a huge part of drawing up this plan because it allows Notre Dame to stay independent, and that is incredibly important to that school. And yet, even with all these perks, the rumors have started up again. Is Notre Dame going to join the Big Ten? Now, as you all know, NBC signed a contract last August with the Big Ten, along with CBS and Fox, and NBC got the Saturday night uh, Big Ten game each week. Now, there were some interesting issues that popped up with that, a uh, big part being that the biggest brands in the conference have traditionally not played night games in November. Uh, that was all sorted out, at least for last season. I would imagine they will sort that out going forward as well. Uh, but the rumors, as far as Notre Dame are concerned, are that NBC did not want uh, to lose their relationship with the school, but also that they're not totally happy with Notre Dame's home schedules, and they're going to be even less enamored with it if Florida State and other premier ACC schools find a way to leave that conference. To that point, I mean, imagine how much less happy ESPN is going to be with their ACC deal, not only if they lose Florida State, potentially Clemson, etc., uh, but if Notre Dame isn't playing two to three road games in that conference each year. On, you know, on top of the idea, like I said, Florida State, North Carolina, etc., could potentially leave. So the rumors have been that NBC wants Notre Dame to play more Big Ten competition, more of the traditional matchups, right, games uh, against Michigan, Michigan State, last year's monster game against Ohio State, which did uh, huge ratings. Uh, a Penn State-Notre Dame game would be huge. Oregon now, Washington, etc. Uh, for the most part, big regional matchups that matter to a national audience. But right now, there's really no telling what the scheduling philosophies are going to be for these conferences going forward as we move into a different version of the playoff. The Big Ten already plays nine conference games, a big portion of those are going to be really difficult. I mean, I already mentioned all the – Oregon, Washington, USC, uh, Michigan, Penn State, Ohio State, etc. Why would you test yourself against a non-conference opponent that could only stand to hurt your chances of reaching the playoff? Nebraska head coach Matt Rule stated last week that their plan is to load up on easy non-conference games for the foreseeable future. Now, I know that Nebraska is not the same as Michigan, etc., but – that's one more off the table that I would imagine Notre Dame is probably not going to see on their schedule. Now, 
Coincidentally, we saw last Thursday Jack Collinsworth is no longer going to be calling Notre Dame games on NBC. Uh, they replaced him with Dan Hicks, who formerly called Irish games on the network starting back in 2013, and whose wife, Hannah Storm of ESPN fame, uh, actually is an alum of Notre Dame. Along with that, they announced that on weeks that Notre Dame has a bigger game than their Big Ten draw, Noah Eagle and Todd Blackledge, the crew that they hired specifically for the Big Ten game, is going to be calling the Notre Dame games. So, so there's the NBC angle that could be pushing them towards the Big Ten. Uh, there's also the fact that the Big Ten media rights contract, uh, which we've talked about on the show numerous times, it only named one school specifically that the TV networks would offer a full share to if they were to join the conference, and that, of course, was Notre Dame. We know that the Big Ten conference would, without a doubt, welcome them in as a full member from day one. Uh, then, of course, now the biggest thing, you've got the CFP talk. And I know what you're saying, you know, but wait, Gary, didn't you just say that the 12-team playoff was helped put together by Swarbrick? Isn't this what Notre Dame wanted? And the answer to that is yes and no, right? The 12-team playoff, the way that it's constituted for the next two seasons, that's what they wanted. That's five automatic qualifiers for conference champions and seven wild cards at large spots. Last week's CFP meetings have made it clear that the CFP Board of Managers are not going to stop at 12. And the Big Ten and SEC have reportedly told the other conferences that they want as many as four auto bids each for their conferences, along with a larger portion of the playoff money split. So if you move to 14 teams, and eight of them are taken by the SEC and Big Ten, and you've got three other auto bids reserved for the ACC, Big 12, and Group of Five champion, now you're at three wildcard spots. If the CFP expands to 16, that's almost assuredly guaranteeing the Big 12 and ACC two auto bids each, which still leaves you at three at larges. Suddenly for Notre Dame, the odds of getting to play the G5 team are not as high anymore, and you're probably not as likely to host a home playoff game. Throw in the fact that you could stand to make you know less money than you even were before because the SEC and the Big Ten are taking bigger cuts, or, God forbid, the Big 12 and ACC really push back and the Big Ten and SEC decide to form their own playoff you know, separate from the CFP, um, I mean, that guarantees zero access to, you know, the only playoff that would actually matter at this point. Before last week, I think I would have put the chances at, at 0% that Notre Dame would even think about joining another conference. But with the latest ACC Florida State news and the CFP meetings going in a direction that I'm not sure that anyone expected... I wouldn't rule out that the Irish have had discussions with the Big Ten about potentially joining the conference heading into the 2026 season. Whatever comes of these college football playoff discussions is likely going to point you towards what Notre Dame will ultimately decide to do. Now, my opinion, I think they're going to move to the Big Ten, along with Florida State. All right, now let's get out of here. Uh, please remember to subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button, of course. And if you like what you have heard, share it out with your friends. Uh, don't forget, of course... You can catch the Drive-In Podcast. Uh, you can subscribe to the audio version on any of your favorite podcast apps, or you can just become a member here at YouTube, two ninety nine a month to watch it. Uh, the goal is at least two a week. Most weeks I'm going to do three podcasts, and as you guys know by now, on that show, anything goes. So hit me up on Twitter, at GaryWCE. Tell me what you want to talk about. With that said, let's get out of here. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. God bless college football, and hopefully... All of your tickets cash this week. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and follow me on Twitter at GaryWCE. If you want to toss in a question, you can email me Gary at winningcureseverything.com. Make sure and hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.